Okay, guys, so this is the list, the lineup of how long it's going to be actually taking for you to be approved for Social Security Disability Benefits going into 2023, the upcoming year. So here's the bottom line. A lot of people don't understand the breakdown of the stages. Like you go into different stages and they take different amount of times. So we're going to go through each and every single one of them. But in particular, the one that takes the longest, usually that's the most important people, is the ALJ hearing step, which I have the averages right here that we're going to go through state by state. Let's begin right off the bat. Please remember to like, subscribe, leave five-star reviews. First things first, initial filings are taking forever. And that's because at the initial filing stage or the initial filing level, the very beginning level, a lot of people filed during COVID and after COVID, and they're just super overloaded with trying to process them. Now, the Social Security Administration did receive additional funding. Commissioner Keisha Kaji went forward to go ahead and push the agenda of hiring a lot more people, everywhere from DDS reps to uh, essentially uh, local field office people to ALJs, all that stuff. With that said, and this is what's important with this whole thing, with that said, they still don't have enough people to process all of those who applied for disability benefits because for some people who can get onto disability SSDI benefits, 58, 59, stuff like that, they can ride that puppy all the way to full retirement. So it's like retiring early. And that's a really, really just tempting thing to do for a lot of people who don't want to go back into the work environment so long as they have severe impairments. Now, first thing you need to know is that when you initially file, it takes around between six to 14 months. Why such a massive swing? Some states have a lot more people and a lot more people applying than other states. Florida has a ton of people applying. Texas has a ton of people applying. California has a massive amount of people filing. Some of these other states don't. And so those other states that don't have as many people, they're able to process the claims faster. What I'm seeing on average is usually between, I would say, 9 and 13 months, but a big swing for different states about six to 14 months wait time to be found disabled or not approved at the initial filing level. If you get a denial and appeal, you go to the reconsideration level. The reconsideration level is about four to eight months, four to eight months throughout pretty much all the states, unless something bogs down the claim, which does happen. Let's say that medical evidence isn't submitted from the medical provider. The DDS rep quits, which happens one in eight, you know, SSA employees uh, quits or gets fired or whatever, it's just they're not there anymore. So the bottom line is there, there is a high prevalence of that occurring, and that's one of the things you have to watch out for. Now, with that said, we're going to go into the ALJ hearing level portions, state by state. But remember, if you want to expedite all of this, you can go and get a, a speed pass, a genie pass, a fast pass, right? By using I-2-1-40 subsection, again, subsection A, and then it's one through six. So the bottom line here is this. If you go through, you know, all those, you can find ways to expedite your claim. Okay. That's your expedited statute. There's other statutes too, but that's the main one. Now let's talk about the ALJ hearing level. In Alabama, it's taken around 11.8 months at the hearing level. So let's say you file, get a denial, appeal, get a denial, appeal, and reach the hearing level. You're going to be waiting 11.8 months on top of all of that that you've already been through, the two denials, before you get to sit in front of, sit in the chair in front of the administrative law judge, okay? Now, Alabama is 11.8 months. Uh, Alaska is 13 months. Remember, the national average is around 11.5, 11.5, okay? 11 and a half months. Uh, Arizona is 16.3 months. Arizona Arizona's becoming a tricky state for many reasons, but that's another video. Uh, Arkansas, 9.5 months. Okay, very fast. California, 14.5 months. So if you want to apply for disability benefits, you're going to be waiting and waiting in California. All right, Delaware. Oh, it cut off here. Hold on, let me go over here. One second, real cut off on my sheet. Uh, Delaware is at 12.5 months. Okay, so a month longer than the national average. Florida is the national average, 11.5 months. I hear a lot of people in Florida like, oh, it's so much faster in New York and California. No, it's not. No, Florida is the national average for how long it takes. It's the middle ground. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, California is 14.5 months. We'll get to New York in a little bit. But all right, so you've got those two. Georgia is 12.1 months. Hawaii, 17 months. Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii is a ridiculously 
ridiculously long wait time. It's unfortunate. There's nothing you can do about it. But Hawaii is, for a lot of people who don't know this, a, a, a supplemental security income state for the most, uh, you know, and also it's an SSDI state. Lots and lots and lots of people on disability uh, benefits in that particular state. Of course, the grouping of the islands. All right. Um, and Hawaii leads the pack on becoming the worst hit state for inflation. And it's also the most impossible state to live in while receiving disability benefits. And what's sad about it is that the local population of Hawaiians, you know, the true genetic Hawaiians, uh, basically, they just can't afford to live there. And they're having to move out of Hawaii, even though their genetics, their origin, like the natives of Hawaii come from Hawaii. They just can't afford to live there anymore. Um, Illinois, 11.4 months. Uh, Indiana, 10.4 months. Iowa, 10 months. Kansas, 12.3 months. Kentucky, 9.5 months. Louisiana, 10.5 months. Maine, 9 months. Uh, Maryland, 13.5 months. Massachusetts, 13.7 months. Michigan, 9.5 months. Minnesota, 14 months. Mississippi, 10.7 months. Missouri, 11.5 months. Montana, 12 months. Nebraska, right? Because you know, it's not that many, you know, it's Nebraska. Nine months. Nevada. Now, Nevada is, okay, so the thing with Nevada, again, another video, it's 19 months. It's 19 months. There's a lot of reasons, but they're not all the same reasons as California. In fact, many of the reasons are different from California. Um, now, next thing, New Hampshire, 11 months, New Jersey, 10.3 months, New Mexico, 14 months, New York, 11.8 months. So Florida is faster than New York, just slightly. North Carolina, 11 months, North Dakota, 11 months, Ohio, 11 months, Oklahoma, 11.3 months, Oregon, 11.5 months, uh, which I thought would actually be faster. Uh, Pennsylvania, 9.1 months, Puerto Rico, 8.7 months, Rhode Island, 10 months, uh, South Carolina, 8.3 months, uh, which is a real fast one. Uh, Tennessee, 11.3 months. Oh, Shirley, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the $3, uh, $3.99 donation. I really appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you. I'm starting to starting to get a little uh, better, but you can still tell I'm a little bit sick. But indeed, indeed, thank you for the little cup of joe there. Very cool. Thank you, thank you. Um, so let's see. Uh, Tennessee, 11.3 months. Texas, 9.6 months, which surprised the heck out of me. But they have a lot of offices there because it's a massive state. Um, uh, so uh, what we call it? Uh, Utah, 12 months. Virginia, 11 months. Washington, 13.7 months. Washington, D.C., obviously not a state, uh, 10 months. West Virginia, 13 months. And Wisconsin, 9.5 months. Uh, actually, sorry, the national average is 11.8 months. I thought it was 11.5. So the national average right now is New York, and Florida is faster than the national average at 11.5 months. Now, with that said, after you go to the hearing level, you go to appeals council. Appeals council is right now taking somewhere in between around 12 to 24 months. It's a big swing. And here's why. Some appeals council claims are pretty easy to figure out, to brief out. Some of them, however, are unfortunately ridiculously difficult. And they take a while to figure out all the little issues and arguments that come together with them. So as a result of that, what you look at with that situation is how complex is the appeal that you're seeking to get a remand back to the administrative law judge. Now, some of you guys are going to be asking me uh, essentially what happens at the district court, circuit court, Supreme court. Those are set up with timelines where things have to be completed within so much time. Like when you write a, a brief uh, you know, you, you, you do a co-brief like a, a, you know, two, two parties together brief to submit to the judge where the attorney on behalf of the social security administration is writing their portion and their response, and you're writing your portion, your response uh, to the issues presented. Those have to be done within a certain amount of time and submitted within a certain amount of time, etc. So those are all sort of formulaic, but they still take a lot of time. And it's just part of the federal process. One thing I just want to point out with these dockets too, that a lot of people, they hear things and they don't get them Perfectly. A lot of people, for some reason, think that the initial filing reconsideration ALJ and appeals council are like state based. It's not. It's federal based, but it's part of the federal SSA docket. It's the SSA court system. Once you get done with appeals council and go to the next level, then you go into regular federal court appellate uh, court system, which is basically where you're doing the appellate, the district, the circuit, the Supreme for essentially uh, you know, review of the hearing that occurred with the prior claim, right? And what usually happens up here is they remand it back over to the SSA side for the SSI to create an actual decision related to the claim. Because most of the time they don't have the power to decide. They have to remand to fix the issue to have it approved over in the SSA docket side. Okay, so 
Yes, Deb Carter, I am certified for the federal level. With that, but remember, that's for my area. I'm not certified in every state all over the way. I don't do all that stuff. Um, I basically, when it comes to my claims, I do some of my appeals council and some of my district circuit, uh, stuff like that. But for the most part, uh, I'm overloaded with the amount of appeals council that I've collected over the years. And so if I have an appeals council and I'm overloaded and it's something that requires more time to write the brief, I will send it to one of my sister firms and have them work on it. Um, if it's somebody that is, in, you know, very particular to me, like it's somebody where it's like, I knew this issue, I worked on this issue, they, they got it wrong, I told them they were doing it wrong, they, they still screwed it up, then I'll write the brief. Um, the reason why is we get a ton, a ton of initial filings and hearing level adjudications. But I still am certified to do those. Um, but I gotta tell you, though, um, I don't find much pleasure in doing uh, the appeals council is a little bit pleasurable, but the district court ones, I have very little pleasure in doing those. They're just not enjoyable for me. Um, they're, they're not, uh, how do I put it? It's it's a lot of paperwork writing. And uh, it, I don't, I, I guess the way I would explain is this. At the initial filing reconsideration and hearing level, you are arguing uh, basically that the person is disabled. But beyond that, you're then arguing that they made an error as a part of their adjudication. And the issue with that is that it's no longer about the claimant in the sense of the claimant's disabilities. It's more in the sense of where the court screwed up a fact or a piece of law in its application or maybe a timeline piece. Like maybe they applied some legal standard that's newer that shouldn't apply to their adjudication. Like, you know, that happens too. that, that you know, or maybe there's a constitutional issue where that judge was not properly uh, you know, brought in as a judge using the correct standards. And then we have to get another judge to adjudicate it and get a remand and then, you know, all that stuff. So to me, it's less enjoyable and it's less personal to the claimant, but still we have them all the time. All right. That's what you need to know timeline wise uh, when it comes to this stuff. With all that said, the summary of what you need to know is that it's taking longer than it's ever really taken to go ahead and be found disabled. In fact, VA benefits used to take a lot longer than disability benefits for a long period of time. Um, I've seen statistics that show otherwise than that, but I, I don't think that's correct. I mean, I've, I've always seen them just taking longer, but now social security disability benefits de facto are like the longest thing you might have to wait for, especially since most people are getting that denial at the initial filing and reconsideration levels. And the reason, just so you guys know why that happens a lot, is that the initial filing and the reconsideration levels it's a much more skin deep, much more skin deep review of your claim. They have basically uh, a, a, what they call a medical consultant uh, go ahead and go into uh, you know your file, look it, look it over, do some quick notes, write them into a DDE, uh, you know, and that's what your report is, your disability determination explanation. And when you read through their notes and what they saw and what they liked, what they didn't like, I mean, it's just they've got a lot of free. Uh, heavy hand, if you will, uh, you know, ability to just say like, oh, well, I didn't like this. I didn't like this. And they often miss or leave out, whether it's intentional or not, some of the most important parts of the claim that show that that person was in fact disabled. And the SSA at the initial filing reconsideration level uses DDS and DDS reps, they don't have the knowledge base like a judge would to question it, what the rules are and what's actually accurate and what happens. And so you get a lot of bad choices, a lot of bad decisions at the DDS level. And that's because DDS also has a pretty high level of, you know, especially nowadays of people who, you know, start it and then quit it. And that's because there's so much that they have to learn. And that's kind of the problem too, because you're asking a DDS person to do some of the functions of a judge. And in order to do some of the functions of a judge, you have to have a judge's knowledge which they're never going to have. No matter what you do, you, you could do the training. They're just never going to have it. Look, the judges and this, you know, a lot, I know everybody thinks everybody's perfectly equal in the world and everybody's the same intelligence and everybody's the same height and all that stuff. Yeehaw. But the administrative law judges are some of the best disability attorneys that are out there and some of the worst, uh, in my opinion, just higher ups like where they where they were working in the government and they just hired them into that position because they worked these other jobs long enough. So you've got this weird combination of like the best of the best, right? The best of the best uh, administrative law judges, like super high intelligent, really bright above the normal standard, just really incredible beings. You know, just the it, when you look at the human race, their brain is like, wow. And then you have other ones where you're like, what happened, dude? what happened you know and that's just like lawyers too i've met a lot of lawyers where i've been like wow that's pretty good okay 
they're pushing it. They're, they're, they're on top of it. And then I've met some other lawyers. I'm like, you really should just get a job at the law library. And that would be a good speed pace for you. I think that would be excellent. You know, uh, you won't hurt anybody. One of those deals. So, you know, it's one of those kind of deals where no matter what field you're in, I think, you know, the legal field, you got to be very careful. I think the, the medical field, you know, surgery doctors, you really want to get a good, you know, surgeon, but the bottom line is this, um, if you're talking about really high intelligence, high capability individuals, some of the ALJs are just really, really amazing. In fact, I had one ALJ when I was just starting to do hearings who beat the hell out of me. And she was partially right. She was partially right. Um, she was just, uh, she's cranky, super cranky. And she's actually the reason I, I was really mad. I went out and I just, I went out and I was like, F this. I went all the way to the coast. I rented a jet ski. And then, and then basically, um, now I live over literally right down the road from that jet ski rental place because I was so angry and she, she threw my anger at her. I found my true love <laughs> just to get away from all of it by the water. Um, yeah. Even though I never really get to go ahead and do water stuff anyways. Uh, so the point is, um, yeah. So here's the thing. Um, I'm going to, all right. So here's the thing. I'm going to start helping people with VA stuff. Um, you know, uh, James little, I, I see that I'm going to start helping people with the VA stuff. Um, because frankly, I know a bunch of it at this point and I've been helping people out and I've just not been interacting with the system in the way that I should be with it, uh, with my knowledge base and my certifications with it. So we'll start doing more VA questions, which is veterans affairs, which is falling into your disability benefit types. And, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, types of VA benefits. Like a lot of people don't realize if you are approved for your, you know, your veteran benefits, man, these guys are, are taken care of better than the civilians. Okay. You know, you've got your disability types, your pension types, all that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is like, you know, the disability benefit, when you look at the ratio of the, the income, hundred percent ratio versus the finding of disability, the fully favorable or partially favorable, and they get a lot more on the VA side, you know, uh, but anyways, guys, we're going to do some videos on that. Uh, I even have my big book out. So I've started to go through and do a statistical analysis of certain things, which I think are really important. Uh, I'm not trying to step on any VA people's uh, toes. I have seen their videos. Uh, but frankly, I've seen um, some of their stuff and I disagree with it. I disagree with it. And uh, I'm going to give you the reasons why. Maybe you'll agree with me. Maybe you won't but we'll go from there. All right, guys, I will catch you a little bit later. I have to go back to running hearing questions with upcoming hearings for claimants that I have in January. Please stay healthy. Please stay safe. And remember, if you eat too much candy, it's your own damn fault. I love you anyways. I will catch you later. Have fun. All righty, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>